Hello everyone's everyone's. I am here for my review of The Oval Season 4 Episode 17. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Lady T. I like to do reviews on scripted reality shows, reality shows, and also do reactions. If you're returning, you're one of my people, well, welcome back. So I don't have any comments from last week's video, so we're going to jump right on in. Kyle and another Secret Service agent, they come busting through Alan's apartment. They question him. Where is, the, where is the first son at? He looking all confused and everything. Meanwhile, run to that secret service agent Alonso was able to swoop in the other room, grab pre Priscilla Killer Jason, somehow make it outside. My question is, where did this back door come from? Because I know, and y'all know, that Alan lived on the second floor. Therefore, he would not have no back door to go through. And it wasn't they say he crawled out the window onto the fire escape. They said back door and we seen him come out as a back door. So, how did this back door, where did this back door come from? Questions I want to know because at the beginning of the season, we seen Alan, Priscilla, and Assassin Secret Service agent all get into it. And Alan and Secret Service and Assassin agent go over the banister leading downstairs, meaning Alan lives upstairs. So, where did this back door come from? But anyways, run to that Secret Service agent, um... Secret Service agent Alonzo, he got he got creepy still killed Jason. They didn't got outside, but bam, boom! Top flight security of the world do come busting up, giving creepy still killed Jason time to run off yet again. So now these two was going at it, and then finally Kyle and the rest of his team come up wanting to know what's going on. He was like. I was over there hanging out with, um, run to that Secret Service agent Alonzo. I was like, I was just hanging out with my friend Alan. The next thing, no, this SWAT team came in, so I got into formation. I came down here the back door, still don't know how this back door got there, but I came down there in the back door, and I seen this big old swole dude. So, they decided, we gonna take big old swole dude, you know, off and, you know, get him situated, take him to the White House. Because we believe that he know where a creepy thriller killer Jason is. So, run to that secret service agent Alonzo. He get on the phone with Sam like, bruh, we had a dude. We had creepy thriller killer Jason. But this some big old swole dude came up. You know who he is? Like, nah, bruh, don't know who he is. But, you know, I'm going I'm to get to the White House. I'm going to figure out what's going on. And he's like, okay, cool. Meanwhile, run to that secret service agent Alonzo. I all swole. Ty cocked over to the side. Sorry, didn't mean to show my bra. But yeah, he got all that going on. So now he didn't brought brought further into the mixturization of what's going on. He already got this side, kind of sort of know what's going on with Priscilla and these things. And now he didn't got intertwined with going on with knowing the creepy serial killer Jason is still alive. Like, the job already stressful, so now I got these sideline situations going on within the job I got. Bruh. I'm going to assume that the doors at the White House are, like, soundproof because Eli and Victoria are in his office expressing how much they miss each other. And Victoria gets to telling Eli, yeah... It's a funny story, but not like funny fa ha ha. It's like like funny like um my son, he alive. Like we thought that he had went home from this world, but it turns out that somebody has switched his body with somebody who had the cancer and yeah, he just out here in the world right now and we don't know where he at. You know, she excused herself from all the process of being the horrible mother that she is. You know, she can't tell her new boo that, that you know, I'm, I participated in the unaliving of this young man, and I was happy about it. Do it again if I could. I can't tell him all that stuff. But me, I wanted Simone to walk in at that very moment. I wanted her to catch him. She already know that he creeping with somebody. She just don't know who. But at the end of the episode, after Eli and got done, you know, kissing and all that stuff on Victoria, I thought it was going to be the perfume that transferred from Victoria to Eli. No, Victoria, you can't tell me otherwise, took her earring and put it in his pocket so that Simone will know, hey, boo. I got your man. What you gonna do about it? 
nothing. So, yes, I'm ready for that confrontation to happen. I really, really am. Because Victoria be getting on my nerves. And Eli, I don't know what his plan is. I really, it seemed like he wanted to take country them down. I don't know if he's like just with Victoria because it's like I need to use her in the game that I am playing. I don't know if it's that or is it the writing that I am confused about. But these two all up in his office. Like, even Max is looking at this like, I don't know if you wanted her to kill him or what. But whatever y'all got going on, I don't trust it. I don't trust you, ma'am. When I tell you I am Dale and Dale is me, as soon as he seen Nancy get to acting a little bit weird and waving her hand all in his face and smiling for no apparent reason at all, he politely excused himself from the craziness that she is displaying. And I'm like, yes, Dale, I am with you. Child, the scarf is getting on my nerve and it's trying to slide and do some things. So, excuse that it looks different in this scene or clip than it did in the previous one. We just gonna act like we didn't notice that. Yes. Where we at? The rack of do she done gave Nancy some pills and she thinks she's whole now. And she's supposed to take these pills every four hours. And she's offering them to Sharon as well. There's no label on these pills, so ain't no telling what these pills are. For all we know, these pills could be a part into unaliving her like they did Barry. We don't know, but Sharon, she got to play alone. Let me get one of those pills. And, you know, Nancy looking at her very, you know, intensely like, okay, I'm going to make sure you take one of these pills. So it's just like, I don't want to fool around with these pills because it could have been a pill I was taking. But, you know, she was able to, you know, fake taking this pill and you know go ahead and let me just go ahead and sit you no know, send out that was named Dale on his way on the work mm-hmm Dale I'm gonna need you to take this pill and I need you to get this pill tested now I don't think that is something that does, is done at a pharmacy or anything like that but you know this is Tyler Perry land and where any and everything goes so we don't really know for real for real but what we do know is the doggone Nancy is over here acting not like herself. Clearly, she is on something. Donald is past tired of Hunter and his shenanigans. Shout out to Jocelyn Hernandez. Like, on top of you being stupid, you were constantly on that sniffer sniffer. And I'm tired of it. You're supposed to be running the country even though you know and I know and the whole staff know that you are not qualified to, for this job, but you can at least act like it. Like Hunter, he just want his sniffer sniffer, he want his son, and he want him a pretty press secretary. And Donald was like, bro, what I need you to do is get to your son's fake memorial that we got going on. To show the world that you were sincere and you you in mourning and all these things. You're grieving. But Hunter, he not, he not really trying to hear none of that. I want my sniffer sniffer. I want Alonzo to bring her to me. I want my son. And I want a pretty young press secretary. And I want to know if you and Victoria are hunting on each other. And clearly these two are not. They can't stand each other. And, you know, he, he like Kyle. It, it, it's, it's so funny because season one was like he was so... Kyle, stop looking at me like that. Don't do that. This is inappropriate. So now it's the reverse. Even though Kyle is very, very crazy, Donald has, I don't know, latched on or just exposed his inner crazy as well. But, you know, he got some craziness going on to him. But right now at this particular moment in time, I'm tired of your stupidity. I'm tired of you being on your sniffer sniffer. But... To me, it seemed like Hunter being on his sniffer sniffer gives him some type of clarity. And he knows when things are not exactly right. But then sometimes, I guess, I don't know if it's, is it wherever he gets it from that particular time. But sometimes he's just stupid and then on the sniffer sniffer. And then sometimes, like, he's making valid points while he's on the sniffer sniffer. I'm not sure. But one thing is, I'm not going to listen to anything you got to say. I am the president, even though I was brought here by ways that were not my control. I am still the president. I'm going to 
don't need Kareem and his cousin, whose name escapes me, to talk, stop talking about the crimes that they have been committed or are going to commit. Because y'all are living in an apartment. And not all apartments have the thickest walls that you would like. And you can hear what's going on at your neighbor's apartment. And y'all talking about all the crimes that y'all just got done doing might not be a good idea. But anyway, Kareem, he is distraught because, you know, they just got rid of a body. This is not something that he does every day. I'm guessing this is the cousin's life, but, you know, this is not my life. You know, but cousin wants him to get on the life like nothing happened. Although it's messed up, I kind of agree. If you don't want people looking at you sideways, like, okay, it's weird. It's such and such with missing at this time, and you ain't going into work. I understand, but at the same time, if you just committed a crime, like the crime they just committed... Most people are not just going to bounce back like that. Like, no. And another thing, um, wait a minute. You need to get back to work so nobody's suspicious. And two, they got some money coming through. You know that Kareem's pharmacy is like, it is a front to watch money, I'm assuming. But like, I don't know how those workings go. I remember watching The Wire, and they had like a little, a little corner. Like it's not a, it's a. They sold chips and like cigarettes and sodas and stuff like that. So I guess it's like a convenience store without the gas station, and that's where they like run the money through. But like, does it be getting business like that for real? For real? Because I'm assuming that like prescriptions are going to have to be filled for A, B, C, and D. It seems like it's a lot of work going into that. And I wanted for like maybe two seconds to feel sorry for Kareem because he looked pitiful. Then I remembered he put himself in this situation. Kind of, sort of, in a way. Follow me, if you will. If he had just left Sharon over to where she was at and stayed with his girlfriend and his baby, he probably wouldn't be in the situation he is right now. Because I'm pretty sure the Rakadushi had been watching Barry and whoever's in his life and noticed that Sharon was in his life and that he was having some issues with Kareem. And if, if we ever want to do anything to him, we can just, you know, frame Kareem. If you had to just left Sharon alone and y'all just worked together and y'all just was just exes working together, you wouldn't be in this situation you were in. So, bro, you brought it on yourself and that's all I got to say about it. Yeah, you know, like, you getting beat up by the police officer because you want to defend Sharon's daughter, you brought it on yourself. Being paranoid that the president going to come after you, you brought it on yourself. Now having to cover up on this crime, you brought it on yourself because you decided to get with Sharon. So, I guess officer helps a lot. Didn't believe Lily when she said, my husband will mess up and destroy your life. Because now he ain't got no job. He looking to be Lily's bodyguard. Because they done messed up. In the span of 24 hours, they have messed up his credit. He lost his job. He was about to close on a house next week. But since he wanted to, you know, go up against Donald and his people at the White House, now he has nothing and now he's out for revenge. And my, I'm like, sir, I understand that it was your job, like, if you're in trouble, I'm here to help you. I understand it all. But once you realize who her husband was and know that he worked at the White House and you work down here at the police station, that your job being a police officer, was you weren't going to be able to go up to him working at the White House and all the people that he had in his back pocket. You should have known that. But another thing. If they was able to destroy your credit, make you lose your job, and not being able to get this house that you was closing on in the next week, you should also assume that they are bugging your car and they are tapping your phone. So it's not a good idea for you to be telling folks that you are out for revenge. Because they most likely have people looking after you and following you and surveilling you. Left, right, up, down, sideways, 24 of the 7, 24 hours, 24-7. Yeah, that's the word I'm trying to get out. My brain was like, I was trying to say it differently, and my brain refused to do that. But, like, Lily's like, I told you, and stop making all these, you know, threats and everything else. Just, just, just don't do it. My husband knows some powerful people. It would be just stupid for you doing it. Because, you know. 
the last person that she was trying to help Lily out. Look where he is now. Which, my thing is, Lily, you was perfectly safe without a pew pew wound in your shoulder when you was with Bobby. Now, if you're so worried about your family, you should have told Donald that if anything, I'm leaving. And if anything happened to me or my family, I put it out there that all the information I know will be going public. I mean, that should have been a thing that was discussed. Like, you know this information. That should have been like anybody I know. If I just walk past them on the street and nodded at them, if something happens to this person, this information is going public. I don't know why that was not a response, but hey, this is Tyler Perry land. I don't know why Sharon is asking Nancy if she's okay. She is display she is clearly displaying signs that she's not okay. She got her shirt on backwards. She's popping these strange pills. She's walking weirdly around this table. She was doing this to Dale. She's jumping in and out of coherency. But one thing she does say that she feels something is wrong with Barry. And that she didn't took all these pills. Like all of them. I'm like, there was just a full bottle like 15 minutes ago. Like, I, I'm granted, you know, she got these pills in her hand and she ain't giving them up to Sharon. But like, Okay, we need to get you to the hospital right now because you clearly own something and something is clearly not right. So we're going to get you to the hospital. For whatever reason, she, she, I guess Nancy didn't revert it back to when Sharon was pregnant. So now she thinks they're going to the hospital to have a baby. And she don't realize that, you know, she in danger because of these pills. Did the racadoosie didn't, you know, didn't, didn't mix up together. Ain't no telling what's in them pills. It's making her happy for whatever reason. And, you know, we ain't really seen her have no asthma attack. But we ain't really seen her have an asthma attack since, like, that first episode, season one, when she got jumped by the Rakadushi. But, yeah, clearly she not all right. Like, you, you, how is it that I know that she not all right? And I don't know Nancy like that, but you've been knowing Nancy for years, and you gotta ask if she all right. Child, please. I have many issues with this last scene from the episode, mainly like, like top flight security dude of the world. Why was his handcuffs not on behind his back? And like, he managed to go leap forward and like choke like secret service agent dude out. And now they didn't went into this like little stream river lake situation. I mean, when I used to watch cops and stuff, when they handcuff people, they get handcuffed to the back. So they're not access to do anything. This man was handcuffed, like he's handcuffed to the back. So he don't do nothing. This dude was handcuffed in the front. There was no, like, partition separating them. It don't even look like dude had on a seatbelt. It was so many things wrong with this, this scene. Like, we're going to make it so that it's so easy for him to die going to escape this, you know, Secret Service agent. But, like, the way people... Tyler Perry Lynn, girl, Tyler Perry Lynn. So, y'all, that was the gist. If I left anything, y'all, by all means, leave a comment below. If you were new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It is free all day, every day, free 99. Make sure your notifications are on so in my beautiful Facebook super video, you can click on it, you can like it, and share it with your people, and you can come over and be one of my peoples. If you're already one of my peoples, welcome back. You know what to do. And tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples by clicking that icon above. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.